okay or the trace model actually uh, I think I discussed it already in in previous FB live sessions kumbaga yes I'm just going to give you uh, an overview again kumbaga is parang nagre-review lang tayo Okay, and then probably what you need to do is do some practice in text banks or quizzes or practice tests kung meron kang past pre-boards, no, pwede mong gawin yan. And kung may extra ka naman to support us, okay, segue na rin ako. If you want to support us, you can go to www.cpadreams.com auditing theory test banks. Okay, so may test banks po ako na ginawa. It's very affordable and pwede nyo po siyang makuha at uh, a very low price at the moment, okay? So, yung po ay para po sa mga nagre-review talaga yung nahihirapan sila sa auditing theory subject. So, please grab it. Support mo na rin para sa pagpa-price natin sa multiple choice questions daily and para sa maintenance ng site natin, okay? Maraming salamat for the supporters. Now, audit risk model, okay? So, natatandaan, audit risk equals inherent risk multiplied by control risk multiplied by detection risk okay so yan lang yung topic natin ngayon ha, bigyan lang kita ulit ng overview para natatandaan mo again what is the meaning of audit risk okay so this is the risk that the auditor may issue an incorrect or inappropriate opinion when there is a material misstatements that exist or ibig sabihin pa rin ito pwedeng inappropriate yung mabigay na opinion ni auditor. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, baka pwede kang magkamali ng auditor's opinion. Okay? So, ang kailangan dito is, kailangan mapababa yung risk na yon. Okay? Now, anong example ng company na to? If you will remember, yung Enron scandal in the US. Okay? So, yan po yun. Ang pinirisent ng, ng auditor is, the financial statement is fairly stated when the truth is not. Okay? So, ganun yung nangyari sa case ni Enron. Okay? Kung natatandaan mo yan. Yan din yung nag, uh, uh, time na nagkaroon ng financial crisis. Okay? So, please, uh, be very careful. Once you become an auditor or a certified public accountant and you are in an auditing firm, kailangan talaga tama lagi yung ini-issue nating opinion. That is our responsibility. Okay? Now, yung IR natin is this is the inherent risk. Okay? Natatandaan bakit merong inherent risk? Diniscuss natin in the past. Inherent risk, this is the susceptibility, okay, of an assertion to to material misstatements before considering internal controls. Ibig sabihin kasi, no, yung internal controls, hindi mo pa kinukonsider, meron na talaga siyang inherent limitations. Why? Ano yung mga yon? Okay, the possibility is you are questioning the client's integrity or the integrity of the management. Possibility is there could be a collusion or management override. Okay, there, there might be some business transactions that are not fully disclosed. Okay? So, bago pa lang yung internal control mangyari, meron na talagang uh, possibility na uh, magkamali ang isang auditor kasi gumagamit din siya ng professional judgment. Okay? So, yan is very important maintindihan yung inherent risk na yan. Bago mo i-consider yung internal control, nandiyan na yung mga inherent limitations. Okay? Kaya laging nandiyan ang inherent risk natin. Okay? Now, punta tayo dito sa CR which is control risk. Okay? Yung control risk, eto naman dito na papasok yung internal control. Kumbaga is ito is before. This one is after considering internal control. Ano yung ibig sabihin natin? There is a likelihood that material misstatements will not be caught by the client's internal control. Ibig sabihin yung implemented internal controls did not work properly. And the internal controls of the, the, the client is weak. It's very weak. And then, because it is weak, there is an impact on the financial statements. Remember, okay, ang internal control ang nagpo-produce ng financial statements. Ano yung mga policies and procedures na ginagawa inside the company na merong impact sa pagpo-produce ng financial statements? For example, budget. Okay, yung budget is, ang gusto ng mga tao is ma-achieve ang budget. Okay, why? Kasi meron silang incentives. Okay, so 
may impact sa KPI yan. Key performance indicators, gusto nila, okay, na ipakita na yung target is na hit, so mataas ang KPI, so they will receive their incentives. But in reality, hindi pala. Okay? So, let's be very careful in checking the internal controls or or assessing the internal controls of the management. Now, etong dalawang to is tinatawag din yang RMM, the possibility of there there's a risk of material misstatement. Ito ngayon is tatawagin nating client risk. Okay? So, yan po yon. Yan yung client risk. Okay? Na tinatawag. Now, punta naman tayo sa detection risk. Okay? Ito naman yung auditor's risk. Okay? So, ibig sabihin pala, auditor's risk, this means that this can be influenced by the auditor. Okay? There is a likelihood that the material misstatements will not be caught by the auditor. Okay? Ibig sabihin, may possibility din na yung auditor is magkamali. Okay? Ngayon, pag nakita ni auditor, di ba, na yung internal control is very weak, anong gagawin ni, ni auditor dito? Ibig sabihin, more tests. Okay? Ibig sabihin, kailangan mas marami kang testing na gawin para yung chance ni auditor na makot yung mga mistakes is mataas din. Okay? Now, ano pa ang kailangan gawin natin dito? Okay? Hindi rin kasi pwedeng ma-reduce ni auditor to a zero level yung detection risk. Why? Because we are not doing an absolute test. Ibig sabihin, kaya nga ang binibigay natin is reasonable assurance. Kasi uh, we are not checking 100% for every other transactions, which is impossible if you are auditing a big company or big corporations. Sa dami ng transactions mo, gagamit ang auditor ng materiality level. Okay? So, nagsiset tayo ng materiality level. Okay? Now, of course, kung makikita ni auditor na yung internal control ni client is very weak, then dapat taasan mo yung, material, uh, yung materiality level is dapat uh, mas mataas dun sa set mo. Okay? Now, ano yung relationship nila? Nitong inherent risk control risk, of course, they are direct, these two. And then, against the detection risk, they are inverse relationship. Okay? So, uh, erase ko muna para meron parang space. Now, ibig sabihin, etong dalawang to at saka etong control risk mo, lagi yung magkasama. Yung detection risk mo, hiwalay yan. Ang relationship ng dalawa na yan, against dito is inverse relationship. Okay? Anong ibig sabihin? Anong ibig sabihin kapatid? Ang ibig sabihin, kung mataas ang inherent risk and control risk mo, Okay? Ang detection risk is mababa. Okay? Ganyan lang lagi ang tinitingnan natin. Okay? Now, maglagay tayo ng value. Okay? Maglagay tayo ng value dito. Okay? Kasi, di ba sabi nila walang calculations. Actually, there is a calculations, no? There is a calculations. There are two ways actually. Paano mo gagawin yung audit risk? Pwede kasing maglalagay ng percentage ang auditor or pwedeng gagawin niya is maglalagay siya ng kung low or high. Okay? Like for example, audit risk is low. Okay? Yung inherent risk and control risk, high. And then, high din ang control risk niya. Okay, so meron ibang way ang presentation ng auditor. Audit risk is low and then inherent risk is high, control risk is high, then your detection risk is low. Okay? So ganyan yung presentation na pwedeng gawin ng isang auditor. Okay? Pag nagre-report siya. Okay? Pwede rin naman ang mangyari is, of course, kung babalik ka rin mo yan, high, low, low, then high. Okay? So, ganyan yung presentation. Pwedeng ganyan. And then, pwede rin by percentage. Okay, let's do it in percentage para maintindihan mo. Okay? Algebraic formula din. Okay? Ang sineset mo lagi is mag-set ka ng audit risk. Like, for example, ang audit risk mo is 0.02 or 2%. Okay? Then, ang inherent risk mataas, gawin nating 0.80. Okay? And then, ang control risk mataas din, gawin nating 0.5. 50%. And then, what will be your detection risk? 
Okay, sa linya, i-calculate mo nga. Okay, so ibig sabihin, ano dapat ang detection risk mo dyan? Alam mo na kaagad actually, it should not be higher than, uh, uh, in this case, 5%. Okay, ang audit risk mo is napakababa man na o nasa 2% ka na. So ibig sabihin, ang detection risk is, uh, isiset natin not higher than 5%. So ang makukuha mo dito is 5% actually. Okay? So, i-multiply mo lang 80%, multiply by 5%, multiply by uh, 5%. Ang makukuha mo is 2%, 0.02. Yun yung audit risk natin. Okay? So, ganyan yung kinakalculate. Ang ang kwan dyan is uh, algebra lang. Okay? Igalaw-galaw mo lang yan. Okay? So, I will leave it to you, yung part na yan. Pero baka itanong, at least alam mo kung paano siniset. Okay, ng high, low, high, low. Okay? So, yun lang, very simple lang yung ating discussions to remind you lang about uh, audit risk model kasi lagi po yung kasama. Okay? And then, I will discuss then on our next meeting about, on our next FB Live about uh, audit sampling. Kasi lagi yung napapasama, what are the types of sampling? Siguro yun yung i-discuss ko. And then, audit report. And then, we will close auditing theory lessons. Okay? So, yun lang po. Maraming maraming salamat for tuning in with me. And dito sa journey natin sa auditing theory lessons, I'm really grateful and thankful with you. I hope you enjoy uh, all these FB Live sessions for auditing theory. If you have any requests for me to discuss in the upcoming Friday session, so please let me know and comment it here on this FB Live sessions. I will check it and I will I will read it and check if there is a possibility to do FB Live for those topics. Salamat po, mabuhay po kayo. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this video lesson. If you haven't done so, please click the subscribe button.